Jesus today? Huh? Are you on the inside outward or the outside inward? Oh man, what we had the elders here this morning and they began to talk and I was able to just keep my mouth shut and hear what the Spirit, old brother Red taught me, he said, son, you learn to keep your mouth shut and you can get them nuggets out of the air. And boy, with the elders here this morning at this grand time that we're having, we were able to pick up a lot of things that was being said. Just, just loved it. Just, oh, just had a wonderful time. So glad that each and every one of you come out today. Celebrate a wonderful time in our life that God has given us this elder to walk before us for 80 years. And you know what the Bible says? You're inexcusable, old man, for the life he lived has lived before us. We have, we have something to live by. We are inexcusable. You die and go to hell, it's your fault because he lived the life before us. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. The Lord hath made, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made and I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his courts in praise I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made I will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. I do rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. I do rejoice, he has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts in praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I do rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. I do rejoice, he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, yes, he has made me glad. I do rejoice, he has made me glad. I do rejoice, he has made me glad. Has the Lord made you glad today? Come on up, Sister Ruby. You can sing us a dozen, 25 songs, something like that, just a few. Don't want to last too long, about 25, 30, maybe 40 songs. Has Jesus made you glad? Huh? Are you happy? Yeah. Are you excited? When you get up in the morning, are you glad to get up? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Or are you just, oh my God, I gotta face another day? Oh my goodness, what's so bad? Oh, I wish I'd have went to bed a little bit earlier. I wish, you know, if you got Jesus in your heart, when you rise. Somebody else with. I was talking to Dad this morning, 
And me and him was beginning to talk. And he said, I love to work. Hey. I love to work. I love, he said, you know, you can go lay down, son, in a bed. He said, a lot of people don't like to work. They, they rather just lay down. He said, but that bed will only last so long that you got to get out of it. He said, but when I get out and I begin to work, the most if you would go and spend the day with my dad, and you want to see him the happiest, see a load of straw out there where he climbed through the top of it and began to work. Come on. You want to see my dad miserable, have nothing for him to do. That's right. Amen. Uh, me and my mama hunt something for daddy to do when there's nothing to do. Y'all keep it busy. We got to. Because it's, it's a bad <laughs> Work while you're young. Huh? Work while you can. What are you talking about, Brother Greg? I'm talking about getting something on the inside of you that you're willing to work for. Now, Dad always said this. It's better to work for $3 a day and doing something that you enjoy to do than Come work on. for $300 yeah, a day yeah. and hate every bit of it. So, do you love Jesus? Oh. Do, you, do you love Him? Are you excited yeah. about Him? taught me I was sick, I was miserable I couldn't survive and I went down and I spent some time with my elder and we was riding around and he looked at me and he said son when you find that job that makes you happy you'll never be sick another day what happened? I came home I began to work on the church and I began to get up at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning and I would be at the church and we were building it down that downstairs and we worked and we worked and I'd go home 12 1 o'clock at night Because I enjoyed it. Was it paying no money? Uh, no. No. It paid no money, but it paid something more. He gave me a peace of mind. He gave me help. He gave me wealth and measures. And just like the old slave was, I was the richest man around. Uh, Why? Because I felt what made me happy. Yes. Huh? Amen. That's what you got to do. Find what makes you happy. And you'll know it because your body won't reject it. If your body's rejecting it, there's an issue problem. Go ahead, see it. Great to have everybody here today. People said I'd never make it. Said I'd never see it through. And they don't know what keeps me going I guess they never have met you You know my life was in shambles Until the day you came along You've turned my tears into laughter, Lord and you gave me a brand new song And I'm still holding on And Lord, I'll never let you go You gave me a smile You've touched my heart and my soul And the bridge is that's behind me, Lord. You know I burned them to the ground, but I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I ever found. Voted likely not to prosper. Was left hanging over my head You'll never count for nothing Now that's just what most people say Now I've been known to be unsettled I never stayed around too long 
Jesus. You're the treasure, Lord, I was searching for. And Lord, I'm still holding on. And I'm still holding on. And Lord, I'll never let you go. You gave me a smile. You've touched my heart and my soul. And the bridges that's behind me, Lord. You know I've burned them all to the ground. But I'm still holding on. Cause you're the best thing, Lord, I've ever found. Now would it likely not to prosper? Was left hanging over my head. You know I never count for nothing. Now that's just what most people said. And I've been known to be unsettled. I never stayed around too long. You were the treasure. I was searching for And Lord I'm still Holding on And I'm still Holding on And Lord I'll never let I'll never let you go You gave me A smile You've touched my heart And my soul And the bridge that's behind me, Lord. You know I burned them all to the ground, but I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I ever found. And the bridge that's behind me, Lord. You know I burned them to the ground, but I'm still holding on. You're the best thing I've ever found. Yeah, I love the Lord, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. See Uncle Bob get just a little bit older. He's like me. Me and him, we got better looking with age. We didn't start out too good, but we ended up good. I don't sing a whole lot anymore. Leave that to the young folks. They need to do something. They ain't much work in that, so they'll do that. In my way grow up dream precious Lord linger near when my life is almost gone hear my cry hear my call hold my hand Lord Lest I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, Lord, lead me home, and let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, Lord. I'm worn Through the storm Through the night Lord lead me on To your light Take my hand 
precious Lord, lead me home. When the shadows appear and the night Lord draweth near and the day Lord is past and gone. At the river, Lord, I stand. Guide my feet and hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, Lord. Let me stand I'm tired Lord I'm weak I'm worn Through the storm Through the night Lead me on Lord Into your light Take my hand Precious Lord Lead me home Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, Lord, let me stand, I'm tired, I'm weak, Lord, I'm worn, through the storm, through the night, lead me on, Lord. Into your light, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. What a beautiful day. We don't to lift no man up, but this is a special occasion. It's one that is, you know, the scripture says that he would bless a man with 70 years. Anything after that is true blessing of God. So he's give two brothers 10 years plus. Because of their walk with God and their endurance, Get ready, Drew. There, everything that's going on, and we've got Dad's closest friend living. He's had so many over the years that was great brothers. But these two men traveled the country together. And I told some of them this morning, I don't know if either one of them ever preached a message while they was together. But they ragged each one. Brother Green told me this morning, said that he even nailed me out in the yard yesterday. Didn't give me no break. I'm going to ask, I've done ask Brother Carlos to preach this morning because you don't leave without hearing the Word of God. But I do want Brother Green and Brother Red to testify a little bit. If it takes an hour, you'll endure it because I know each and every one of you want that food and you can't get it till we close. So it don't matter how long it is, but the one thing about it, I'm not going to make you come back tonight. We're going to enjoy today and fellowship one another. You know, so you, you ain't got to worry about coming back tonight and me taking up no offering. You can give everything you want to give this morning, but I want to ask Brother Green to come up and testify and speak, do what he feels like God wants him to do. Uh, you, you watch them other shows where they barbecue and roast, I guess, if y'all want to barbecue daddy today and roast him, that'd be all right. It's, it's his day. Y'all got the opportunity to do what you feel like. I'm going to ask Brother Green to uh, testify for a little bit, and then Andrew's got a special song he's going to do. Uh, after yesterday, I don't know where I've got anything good to say about this falling off. 
Huh. Now, it's been a, been a while since he saw me. And when I got there, he just jumped dead all over me. And he went to gouge me just like an old rooster. I throw in the spurs to you. And uh, directly, it got cold. And uh, decided he wanted to carry me in the house. And we went in there, and Sister Georgia had the heater on to get warm. And Lord behold, they had this fella called Stevenson, I believe, some honky tonk. Oh, uh, fella, he was up there singing and playing. He's cutting the foot. And he was hollering about Ethel, and somebody's creaking. I don't want to come home and repent of, of what, watching it. But anyway, I'm here today. I want to say some things about Brother Bob. I don't want to gouge him too much uh, if the Lord permits. And, uh, but I want to say one thing before I do tell you. He was over there yesterday and he was messing with his head up there. He said, I think I'd need to plant something. I thought within myself, how can you plant anything in a sand bed? <laughs> I won't grow. But nevertheless, I just kept my mouth shut. That, that one's for you today. Uh, okay. I figured you would. But uh, anyway, uh, years and years ago, I met Brother, Brother Cooper and I. He sort of took me in his way, and we went evangelizing a little bit across the country, and uh, he brought me up to the camp meeting. I was sitting along about where this gentleman over here sitting, and I and I got to watch him, Brother Bob, and how he took all of them little babies, and how he would play with them and love them, and sing. He'd get them to sing where nobody else could, and they loved him to death. And I and I see a lot of them that's grown up still loving him. And still hanging on to it. And I told Brother Cooper that day, I said, now this is what a pastor is supposed to be like. Somebody that loved their flock and really cared about them. Now, if you ever saw a man that loved his people, he loved them. Now, he preached hard to get the backslider in because he knew if he'd get the backslider in, the prodigal son in, he knew they would be a robe and a jewel, and they would be a wonderful day of praising and glorifying God. You see, this is how he loved, and uh, he preached holiness, church. Come on, I've been around him a lot of years, and I've listened to him preach. I've seen him when he was like Speedy Gonzalez. Or maybe that road runner jump up there and say, beep, beep, beep. And, uh, but, but, but nevertheless, he was in the Holy Ghost and he was having a good time. Amen. Amen. And that's what it's all about when you're in the Spirit and having a good time in the house of the Lord. And you feel good about yourselves. And, and about this thing of riding and ragging one another, we did that. We had a lot of that going on. But anyway, the Lord finally, he gave me something to get him back with. And next thing you know, he would be nailing me with something else. And, but I forgave him for all the years for all that meanness. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I want to tell y'all something. You'll never meet a better man than Bob McKinney. I love him very much. I guess he's the closest brother that I have in the Lord of anywhere. It makes me think of Paul and Silas, or either Paul and Barnabas. Uh, sometimes, you know, Barnabas and Paul like they got in a fight one time uh, together. But I'm glad that me and him never did do that. I'm glad that we've always had some joy and laughter, and we've always had some good revivals. And God is blessed. I saw him preach. I don't know how any of y'all preach. I've seen people preach. 
But I seen him preach so hard till he, he, he would wet towels and wring water out of them. Uh, and, and he gave everything inside of him. He gave it to the Lord and he gave it to the people. The Bible says, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that wins souls is wise. You'll never know how many souls you've won, brother. All of them little babies that you've preached and talked to, you can win them children up quicker and, than you can. You can take a hundred babies and you can win them quicker than you can one over hard head or a goat head or whatever you want to call them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know that he's got many souls upon his belt. And I've enjoyed the years that I've been with him on the road. And I got to know his brother a little bit, uh, Brother Red. And I think a lot about Brother Red, too. Uh, I'd like to come out and visit with him sometimes, but it just seemed like it just all your time just get it up. You hear me? Amen. So uh, one of these days, as me and I, if I'm still living, and you still living, I want to get out and come out and visit with you, Brother Red. Amen. And, uh, but I'll say this, and y'all listen to this. You'll never find another pastor like Brother Bob. I'm serious about this thing. And he, he's worthy of double honor. I don't care what anybody says, the Bible says to give honor to the elders. And he's worthy of double honor. And this is a day that I think that every one of you should honor your pastor. Amen. Because he is the senior and he is the head in this house. Amen. And I, and I sit up under him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I always like to give honor to the elders. Amen. Because they've been places you haven't been. You see, this man is crying. He shed a lot of tears. And he did it for y'all. Because he had something inside of him and driving him that he wanted you to have. He see, he wanted you to walk in that glory that he walks in. He wanted you to feel the joy that he feels. I don't know how much more I can say. I got something I want to say, but I ain't going to say. I'm going to let you by. You know why? Because I love you. So if you get a chance to honor Brother Bob today, bless him. Amen. If you bless him, God will bless you. Huh? See what you married out, God will marry it back to you. So y'all bless him. Tried my best for you. I love you, Brother Bob. Love your wife. I know she's the backbone of the family. <laughs> she's she's catching you straight when nobody else could. <laughs> so uh, I don't know who's going to speak after me or anything but uh, I just want to Brother Red you, it's up to you eh, brother? let's let the true boy sing he's got a special song this morning and then we're going to get the, the elder up y'all give the Lord a great big hand As I walk down the sidewalk of a sin-stricken city, 
I see the misfortunes of men. A man in the gutter, lying there lifeless, clutching a bottle in his hand. He was some mother's darling, maybe some young man's father. Now he's a prisoner to sin. No hugs in the morning, no family altar. He gets by the best that he can. Thank God for the preacher who told me of Jesus. For I'd be a beggar if not for his grace. Lord, help me show others your love and your mercy. Make my life a witness to others I pray. At a little white church house, at an old tear saint altar, a prayer for God's mercy was heard. Though his sins were many and his burdens were heavy, he took the Lord at his word. The angels rejoiced as he was forgiven. Shouts filled the temple that day. I will never get over my trip to the altar, for I was that sinner who prayed. Thank God for the preacher who told me of Jesus. I'd be a beggar if not for his grace. Lord, help me show others your love and your mercy. Make my life a witness to others, I pray. Thank God for the preacher who told me of Jesus. I'd be a beggar if not for his grace. Lord, help me show others your love and your mercy. Make my life a witness to others, I pray. Help me show others your love and your mercy. Make my life a witness to others, I pray. called me the other night and told me he was going to sing that song. I never heard it, but I'm going to tell you something. That's what it's about. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for someone that kept me out of a gully. Thank God for somebody that would spend their time on their knees in prayer that give me hope to go on. I'll tell you one thing. I don't only thank Dad this morning, but all you elders that are in here, all you that blaze the road ahead of me. I give honor to all of you. There's one thing for sure, Brother Matthew, my walk ain't that hard. You understand me? My walk isn't that hard because I had great men come up that blazed the trail ahead of me that showed me, Brother Carlos, on this thing I got it. I ain't got to take no sling blade. I ain't got to take no axe. I don't have to do nothing but just walk because they already blazed the trail. And they raised it up and they gave us a pathway clear and clear understanding how to live this day. You got problems? It's because you, had, you done got off the trail that they blazed. You want to get your life right? 
get back in. The Bible says, seek you out the old paths and see that they're straight. Huh? Get back on that right path. They already blazed, and it's an easy walk. It's nothing hard. It's easy. Elder, so great to have you here. Hallelujah. Love you. You want to go up? I'm kind of like my grandson was. He never had preached a funeral. But then they asked him to preach a young man's funeral. He said, Papa, when I stood up behind that pulpit, I knowed I was in my place. When a man is called of God, he feels, a, he feels at home when he stands up behind his place. Amen. I want to say a few things about Brother Bob that I knowed him before he knowed himself. <laughs> yes. Before he ever knowed himself, I knowed him. He's a far better man than I'll ever be, and I've worked at it for 81 years. He's an unusual fellow in a lot of ways. But he's one of the best pastors, I believe, that I have ever seen. I never sat under him, but he was so much different than I was till I thought at one time when they was ordaining me to preach that uh, I must have missed my calling. He was so much better than I was. And he still is much better than I am. I want to talk about him just a, a little bit about the difference in he and I in preaching. And, of course, every time that he and I would ever get together, we'd discuss different things. And I'd, and I'd say, Bob, what you been doing? Well, I went way up in North Carolina somewhere, and I preached this preacher's funeral, and so on and so forth. I said, that devil ain't never lived in Nicholsworth, God. Bob, yeah, but you know I love him. I said, you wasting all of your time. He said, well, I tell you, I just love him, Brother Reed. Well, and this is the way I deal with the situation. A person come up for me to pray for. I say, which are you closest to? They said, what do you mean? You closer to death or life? I said, if you're closer to death, we'll pray that way. If you're closer to life, we'll pray that way. We get more results like that. <laughs> How many knows I'm telling you the truth? I, just the way I am. But not Bob. They tell Bob, says, I'm closer to death. He said, you can't die. Right. He's standing there and pray for him till they decide, that's right. He ain't going to shut his mouth until I live. <laughs> so Bob, he'll lay there and he'll cry and he'll pray and carry on. They'll raise him up. I said, Bob, I said, how's he doing? Oh, he's doing well. He was drunk last week, and I talked to him about that too. <laughs> Never giving up. That's Bob McKinney. That's so much difference than he and I, and I just have to say that he is the number one, and the people have been able to sit under him while he's been passed in the church. You're really fortunate and really blessed of old brother Bob. Yes, we've been together a long time, and I never know, I've known him all of his life. I've never met a better man. I've met some good men, but I never met a better man that had the people's interest in mind as much as Bob McKinney. He has worked. He's prayed. He's done everything he possibly could for everybody, and he never showed no difference. I thank God for that. And uh, today I was glad that I was able to come and be with him on his 80th birthday. That's a, and you know, he's still working. It's a joy to be able to work. And he can turn out a lot of work. I don't turn out very much work anymore. 
but uh, he turns out a lot of work, and he'll still be working. There ain't no place for him to retire, and he'll still be preaching, he'll still be praying for the sick, and he'll still be concerned about everybody and their welfare. I thank God for it. I love old brother Bob, and we've been together a long time. I've gave him a lot of instructions. They was all good, but he never accepted any of them. <laughs> That's Bob. That's how he turned out so good. He never received none of my instructions. Amen. So he's still going strong, got a fine congregation. A lot of people's come out on his uh, 80th birthday, and that says something. It says a lot. Amen. Because most of us is 80 years of age. It's done been planted or in a nursing home or somewhere else. But God has been good to him. And he's let us stay around to love each other a little longer and be able for him to save them that, that, uh, that wants to be saved. And he saved them that don't want to be saved. And I'm still around to tell you just every which way you want to go, we'll pray just like that. Give the Lord a good head. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord another great big hand clap. We're going to change the order of the service right here because I think that's what the Lord wants us to do. I remember a story I'm going to tell you they talked about Dad I'm going to tell you what kind of man he is. There was a man just a few years ago. Now you young people, y'all would think it was a lifetime ago, but for us it's starting to get a little bit older. We see how fast it's coming. But a few years ago, a young man locked himself inside of a church in Loganville, Georgia. The cops couldn't get him out of there. He had a gun. He was threatening a lot of people. Phone call come in to Daddy. Said, we need you. Wasn't Daddy's church. Man didn't even sit under Daddy. But a phone call come in and said, we need you. He didn't hesitate not one second about the man having a gun and all the threats that had been given out. He jumped in a car and he started that way and Satan spoke to him and said, today I'll kill you. He said, for just a moment, his foot backed off the gas and then it floored it. He said, I'm still going on. That's the kind of man that God's looking for. One that is not concerned about himself, but he's worried about others. Katie, I might need you to help me sing a song. I can't know if I'm going to remember all the words or not. It's one of Dad's most favorite songs. Friends, don't worry about this heavy load I carry. Don't be concerned if it sends me to my faith can only reach out through this dark and deadly storm of unbelief. Now listen. And if he slips his nail-scarred hand into my Touch 
opportunity. Sister Pat, come on up. Just in case she's coming, as we're going to change this service now, I was told that don't nobody leave after we do dismiss today that all the ladies of the church to meet on the front steps to take pictures, then all the men are to meet to take pictures to go in our first school annual. So we want everybody involved here today on such a great, great special occasion to go forward into to what we're doing. In memory of the ministers and the helpers that's already gone home, and in honor of you elders that are here today, Yes, I said in memory of the ministers and the helpers. You know, we all have a ministry one way or another. But the ministry that, the ministers that I know in my life, they've already gone home. I appreciate them. And the elders that are here today, the young ones that are coming on and ministering the word, all of you can shine a light on somebody's pathway to help them along the way. Key of G. Down through the ages, they've written many pages about those old gospel preachers who... Let's go up and see. <clears throat> Down through the ages, they've written many pages about those old gospel preachers who carried God's word How they went out through the nations Preaching old time salvation Telling the people that they must repent Hallelujah They wouldn't bow down to the creeds of man they just went wherever God would send. They were the voice of many waters taking Jesus to the lost. They were the voice of many waters. Those little gospel preachers telling the story of the old rugged cross. They left their homes and families, went to the mountains, deserts, and valleys. They stayed right with the word at any cost. It was the fivefold ministry preaching Christ down through his 
history. It was the voice of many waters taking Jesus to the lost. Now it was down through the ages. They've written many pages about those old gospel preachers who carried God's word. How they went out through the nations and they preached old time salvation telling the people that they must repent. They wouldn't bow down to the creeds of man. They just went wherever God would send. They were the voice of many waters taking a message wherever they went. Hear the voice of many waters, those little gospel preachers telling the story of the old rugged cross. They left their homes and families Went to the mountains, deserts, and valleys. They stayed right with the word at any cost. It was the fivefold ministry preaching Christ down through history. It was the voice of many waters taking Jesus to the lost. The voice, the voice of many waters. You'll find out one thing. It's not about a man, but it's about...